Infants cry when they're hungry, thirsty, tired or lonely and there's nothing wrong with your baby if they're upset, crying or having a fussy period in the evening. But if an infant cries too often or persistently, there might be a health concern that needs attention. If your baby's crying is accompanied by irritability, lethargy, poor appetite or a fever, it could be that your little one has an infection. And if this is the case, you should speak to your GP or health visitor. Trust your instinct. Colic is something that most new parents dread. It's when your baby cries inconsolably for no apparent reason and for more than three hours a day. The condition generally starts when your baby's a few weeks old and then it gradually increases in intensity week by week until it peaks around week six to eight and it can last until about 12 weeks of age. Colic usually stops by the time your baby's about six months old. And colicky babies often also cry far more in the afternoon and the evening and your baby may have colic if you're finding it hard to settle or soothe your baby. And they clench their fists and go red in the face and they bring their knees up to their tummy and arch their back and their tummy rumbles. The cause of colic or even exactly what it is is not known. And even though babies look distressed, colic doesn't cause any pain, so you don't usually need to see a doctor if they have colic. Colic is extremely common and nothing to worry about. It affects about one in five babies. A colicky baby, or even a little one that's crying excessively, can be very stressful, but it's usually nothing to worry about and it will pass in time. And because the cause of colic isn't known, this only adds to the confusion and worry you might be feeling, and so it's normal to find yourself feeling upset and alone. But just by being there for your baby and offering lots of love helps. If you feel that you're not coping, be sure to reach out for the support of friends, family, support groups, or call the Crisis Helpline, which offers advice and information on how to cope with a sleepless baby or a crying baby. If you find your baby is suffering from colic, you can try a number of things. Some babies like a quiet dark room and others prefer a background of white noise, so be sure to try both. Another method is to cycle your baby's legs. So lie your baby on their back and cycle their legs or bend their knees over their chest oh, and then stretch them out. Uh. And massaging your baby's tummy in circular motions might also work. And there are also some medications out there that can help your baby. You could also try holding your baby in different positions. Now some babies like to be held on their fronts in the tiger tree position, like this, okay? And some babies prefer an upright position. You'll know what they like. And from around six to eight weeks, your baby's also going to start gaining better head control. And then you can lay them on their tummy. And this position can help stretch out their abdominal cavity and aid digestion. Don't be discouraged if some of these things don't work for your little one, because every baby's different. Many new parents assume because their baby has colic, they're in some form of pain, but this isn't true. Mums and dads, they blame themselves and believe that colic is due to something they've done wrong, or that they don't know their baby well enough, or they're simply not up to the job of being a new parent. Nothing could be further from the truth. Colic is a condition that affects your baby and is not a reflection on you as a parent. It's very easy to become stressed with a colicky baby, or even a baby that cries a bit more than usual. And if it all gets a bit too much, put the baby in a safe place, such as their cot, and take a short break. Remember, you're doing a great job and you're not alone. Try to let go of any guilt and frustration. There's plenty of advice out there if you're finding things a little overwhelming. Call the NCT or attend one of their early days groups for support. There's also lots of useful information on the NHS website. If you're really struggling, be sure to visit your GP, health visitor or pharmacist for more personal, tailored advice.